Uh, Angie, you'll be taking notes, is that right? Or did we change that? I was going to ask if Elise is here today. But I, I am, and I am taking notes. All right. I just made a doc, and I don't know. Anyway, um, I don't know how to find you. But, um, All right, while you guys sort it out, we'll sort um, that out. I guess we uh, get started. Um, as usual, we have an open session uh, followed by the executive session. Uh, so for the open session, the agenda is in, is in the board packet, but for those that, that do not have access, uh, we're going to talk about um, you know, just an operational update, as we do normally. And then a few um, special agenda items today, um, a little talk about time management at our board meetings, or meetings in general, and we're going to do updates from the different board committees, uh, very quick, two minutes for each of the five committees, and then we get uh, an update on the content strategy as well as um, an update on the uh, advertising strategy for Drupal.org. So with that, I'm going to give the floor to Holly Thanks. for the uh, operational update. Yeah, thank you, guys. Um, so just a, you know, a, a few notes about some of our key uh, areas that we've been working in from the month of January. Um, you'll, you'll note that the whole uh, board packet has turned over in terms of the metrics that we're reporting on. Um, just to start with, um, then I will just make the audible announcement that uh, we're definitely going to be working on how those are presented throughout the year. So, uh, you know, last year we got in a habit of collecting data and trying to use that more uh, to understand where what it says about our work and what kind of choices we need to make. Um, and we presented that in table format throughout the year in the board package. Um, and we are currently working on um, revisiting how we present that data so that it has a little more meaning behind it for you. So you'll see those change from month to month as we implement some new, um, new systems. But, um, <coughs> A note about that, and if you have questions or feedback or thoughts, uh, we definitely want to hear those. So, if, if there's something that does or does not work for you, definitely feel free to, to send me a note um, as we work out uh, our dashboarding stuff. So, the logistics aside, some of the highlights uh, from January. Um, obviously, we're, we're all starting to hear uh, work around releasing uh, Drupal 8 with the community. Uh, so the DA Accelerate program um, kicked off strong in January. Uh, huge thanks to the branch. Sorry, Holly, I'm finding it really difficult to actually hear you. I can hear that you're speaking, and but the it's just a bit fuzzy and indistinct. Can you get close to the mic or something? Yes, and or it's totally ignoring the mic. Oh, that's oh, that's, that's much better. Thank beautiful. you. That's so funny. <laughs> we moved it like six inches. Okay. <laughs> Thank also, you. I'll also face the microphone. <laughs> that right. also helps. Good deal. So we, um, we, as I was saying, we're, we're working on uh, Drupal 8 Accelerate, that project a lot, and I wanted to send a huge thanks to the branch maintainers and Angie in particular for all their work to vet the proposals that come in and also, you know, uh, get together the things that they want to see funded. Uh, we've made nine grants so far, um, lots of entity field work in those grants, um, but also a couple of events, including the Drupal Camp New Jersey Sprint, where they did a lot, a lot of work on menus. Um, and our next big sprint that's being funded through the program is uh, is a CI sprint that'll happen at the end of March. So Jeremy and Nick and um, actually um, Shyamala and a, a number of people from the community will be here in Portland uh, working with the uh, Drupal.org team here uh, to 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 get that next set of um, of testing issues tackled uh, for the Drupal 8 team. So. We're excited about that program, and we've definitely seen an uptick in community-submitted uh, applications lately, which is good. So hopefully we'll we'll see more of that and more ideas from the community. On the roadmap uh, side of things, on Drupal.org, um, the team has really been working hard at the board and working group priorities, uh, in particular better account creation and login. So I think we have the majority of the account creation improvements in place, and this has been huge in both uh, making it easier for folks to sign up for an account in a, in a meaningful way while also reducing the number of spam accounts that we have. 
Uh, and so the next focus on that side is on the user engagement path. Um, and you'll see some notices go out to the community about some of the work that we've done there um, so that we can give our folks the right, um, the right level of permissioning on the site um, as, they, as they engage with the community. Uh, issue credits is another um, area on the roadmap that, is, that we're still working on. Uh, we made an initial commit on that issue, uh, but it, the progress has definitely been slowed down by a couple of things. Uh, one is a set of internal projects. Uh, we moved DrupalCon sites over to events.drupal.org, and that was a huge lift, but it will hopefully, the idea is, you know, end up giving us more time or sorry, end up making sure that we spend less time launching each new site um, and also getting elections off the ground uh, and uh, improving on the experience that um, folks had last year. Um, and also, uh, I think the, the, the other thing that really um, slows that work down is that um, we're excited because we've had a lot more community contributions uh, to Drupal.org lately, uh, but you know, we're also then responding to those community contributions, right? So. It's uh, uh, that definitely takes up a chunk of time, so it's going a little slower, but we're still working on that front. On the DrupalCon side of things, um, not technically in January, it happened technically in February, but DrupalCon Latin America, we did one. We had one. <laughs> it was a big moment for us <laughs> um, to actually get that done, um, and the event was really positive. Um, and I, I just uh, will have lots more details for you next month, and there's some more detail in the packet even, but I uh, just want to send a huge thanks to um, Hyro and Camotech and um, all the folks who helped us pull that event off. Nick Vidal, Leandro, um, really, really helped make that a wonderful space where I think uh, we really learned from each other through that process. Um, so it was wonderful for that. Los Angeles um, is launched on events.drupal.org, as I just discussed, which is great. Um, Reg should be opening up very shortly this week. Um, we should see that open up, which will be great. Um, and also, uh, I just want to make sure that uh, everyone is aware that we are getting ready now that Latin America is behind us for our next DrupalCon in another location. And we're planning DrupalCon Asia in India. So Megan and Rachel took a site visit in January. They visited a number of cities, um, really spent time with the community to understand what their needs were um, in general in India, as well as you know what each community it looks like in those locations, which is pretty amazing. Um, and I have to say that the most amazing part is just the kind of reception that they got from the community everywhere they went. Um, the community put together events specifically for them and, you know, uh, really showed them the best of what's happening in India. So we really are excited about that event. Things will be really spectacular. So that's the momentum on the DrupalCon side of things. Um, and then the other big uh, push right now is elections for the board, of course, the uh, at-large seats. So. Uh, we launched nominations in January. Um, right now we have 18 candidates who have nominated themselves and they represent 12 countries, which I'm really excited about. We have much more geographical representation than we did in the past. Um, uh, lots, several folks from Latin America, several folks from Europe, someone from New Zealand, someone from China. So I think that those are all really good uh, positive steps. That's awesome. Yeah. And um, two women, so I'm going to take it. I did tweet yesterday. Where are my ladies at? <laughs> um, nominations close on Friday, and then meet the candidate sessions are next week. So I'm just scheduling people into those meet the candidate sessions now. Um, and then just as a reminder about the schedule, voting opens on March 9th and will run through the 20th. Um, and then we'll be able to we'll ask the board to ratify the results via email and make the announcement publicly on March 25th. March 9th through 20th for voting, and we'll announce it on March 25th. <coughs> so I think those are the highlights. Any questions from the board packet? I think there's no questions. All right, well, I think we can keep moving then. Thanks, Holly. That was great.
um, some exciting updates. Uh, a quick item that I wanted to tackle, um, you know, real quick is that um, after the board retreat and, and after some of the last board meetings, a couple of us, you know, huddled um, about how we can do a better job of, of staying on time in, in some of our meetings. So we've, the last few meetings, we've kind of run over every single time, and so we we all agreed, those that uh, were part of this, this conversation, that we should do um, you know, a little bit more time management. And so as of, as of today, we, will, we would like to try two uh, things. One is uh, time boxing uh, the conversations. And as you can see from the board packet, for each of the agenda items, we added how many minutes uh, we want to talk about um, you know, each of the topics. So that's a new addition. And so I'll try to help manage uh, things towards that. Uh, right now, we're doing fine. <laughs> we started uh, actually five minutes late with, with the call. So we're actually right on time. Uh, the other thing that we would like to ask people to do is to save your questions uh, to the end. You know, after each topic, we can uh, use the remaining minutes that we have to, to you know, to do Q and A, but not to ask questions during the actual presentations uh, itself, because chances are these questions will be answered later. So, we're going to start with these two things: you know, time boxing and saving the questions to the end. Uh, hopefully that works. If it doesn't work, we'll try some other things. There's many other things we can do, uh, but we figured we would just start with these two actions. Is there any questions on that? Yes. Angie asks if we should use the question box in GoToMeeting. <laughs> that's right. So that's also a very good thing to do, uh, so that the whoever the presenter is of a session or, or a, a topic, they can look at uh, at the questions in, in the go to meeting. And uh, if we're limited on time, that person can pick maybe the most relevant or the best questions or uh, whatever judgment he or she may, may want to use. And then if not all questions are answered, we can always um, you know, answer them after the call or in email or some other means. Great question, Angie. <laughs> Any other questions? Awesome. Well, in that case, um, I suggest we keep going to make up a little bit of lost time in, in the start. Um, so let's move on to the board committees. So two minutes each, uh, starting with the revenue uh, committee. Sure. This is Megan Sanicky. I'll just <clears throat> make mine short. But uh, January was looking looked really good for us this year with revenues, and um, we are just keeping our eye on Drupal Jobs. Uh, Carrie is going to give a presentation of where we are with our digital advertising in Drupal Jobs, um, and uh, we are also pulling together the Drupal 8 Accelerate fundraising campaign, and uh, so that's something that we'll be kicking off publicly uh, in the next uh, couple weeks. Uh, in the executive session, we'll be talking more about that, and Jeff can give an update there of some of his initial efforts. Um, <clears throat> and also, I just wanted to point out that um, one of the things we're doing to uh, grow the revenue team is we are staffing up. Uh, we've already hired Rachel Riviera as our junior sales rep working on Drupal jobs, and we have a position open. We're currently looking for someone to be our digital ad sales rep. We're already 33% of goal right now for the year. We had some great early wins. Um, there's lots of room for growth, and we're looking for the right person to help us, um, you know, accelerate revenue in that area. Awesome. That was it, or was there more? That's it. All yep. right. Thanks, Megan. Governance. Governance. Um, we didn't meet this uh, this past uh, this past uh, um, uh, month. However, uh, we did make the changes that fo folks asked for the uh, for the uh, uh, language um, uh, for the bylaws, and uh, we're looking to um, get a uh, uh, email vote on that. Very good. Uh, finance. So Finance Committee uh, did not meet in person, but we did review the October, November, and December 2014 
financials and notes by um, email, and we'll be presenting those to, in executive session today for board approval. Well, thanks, uh, Tiffany. Uh, the executive committee, uh, we didn't meet, so we can go straight to marketing. All right, I am still working on finalizing uh, commitments for members of the committee, so I hope to have our first meeting next week where we can build out more of an official plan, and so hopefully the next time that we all meet, I'll be able to give you a list of who is on the full marketing committee. All right, great. Just a reminder that that was Gina Montoya, hello. marketing committee chair extraordinaire. Hello, hello, okay. thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, and you know, welcome. Um, all right. Is there any questions on the on the board committees? Uh, just to disappoint the exec committee, we did meet. Oh, we did meet. I'm sorry. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we talked about time boxing meetings and things. We, that's right. We did meet about that. <laughs> Direction in the minutes, please. <laughs> As you see. Um, all right. Um, any other questions? I don't see any. All right, great. Um, all right, so let's move on to the uh, content strategy update, please. All right. Close that out. And move this down right here. Yeah, just so you know they can't see that on the screen, so you're fine. They can't see questions. Mm -mm. Okay, perfect. <laughs> all right, I'm going to uh, kind of plot through this as. Uh, quickly as possible here. So um, as a, most of you on the call know, uh, we uh, started the content strategy project earlier this year uh, with the objectives to improve quality and findability of relevant content on Drupal.org, uh, to reframe the Drupal project around user roles and proficiencies, really taking a look at that user research that we've done in the past and using that to uh, make all of our decisions, or at least a large portion of our decisions. Uh, to develop a content governance uh, plan for Drupal.org to, to work on the quality of content on Drupal.org, um, and also to have a real focus on user engagement and helping to promote contributors that are uh, giving back to the project. We've been working with uh, Forum One, and uh, one of the things that we noticed in this project pretty early on is that it takes a while to get a, a new contractor up to speed on just kind of the scale and scope of Drupal.org. It's a it's a huge site. Um, I often throw around the, the numbers of 1.2 million nodes and 2.4 million comments, and that's an awful lot of content. Um, and it, so it just takes a long time to, to get people up to speed with a lot of the history, a lot of the background. I felt this myself when I was coming on board with, uh, uh, with the role of CTO. So. Um, to get them started, we gave them a whole bunch of background documents. Uh, we walked them through the content ecosystem, all of the subsites of Drupal.org, uh, we showed them all the communication channels that we've documented that we know that we have. Uh, we did an initial content type inventory that shows uh, content types over uh, content type counts over time, so we can kind of see what content types are growing and shrinking on Drupal.org. Um, we also did a user task to content type mapping um, and a, a current site map. This is a very high level site map, but it's going to be important in some of our ongoing work. Um, one of the things that, that we were really trying to get out of this, uh, this project was a messaging framework. Um, and part of that messaging framework is a series of what we call big ideas. These are, um, I, I've heard it described by some community members who reviewed this as, as very markety in, in terms of uh, the, the language being used. And, and I would say that's absolutely correct. These are the big ideas that we use to, to really market what Drupal.org is, what Drupal uh, the community is. So people need to know that Drupal.org offers the best Drupal resources on the web, that is supported and maintained by a welcoming and cross-disciplinary community of Drupal practitioners. So that's one of the big ideas we want to throw out there. Um, related to that, we want to inspire people by the wide and active global network of Drupal users and their passion for the software. And we want that to come through in all of our messaging that we're using. Um, Joe can talk to this a bit too, but um, we're definitely collaborating between our marketing and communications teams and the Drupal.org team to make sure that we're um, kind of in, infusing everything we do with these messages. Um, the next big idea is to get people inspired. To, in order to get people inspired, uh, we need to confirm their opinions about Drupal by making it easy for them to find community conversations, user resources, 
and the vast catalog of con contributed projects, case studies, um, and it really show them opportunities to learn and build their professional proficiency around Drupal. One last big idea is to cause them to use Drupal, create a user account, post a question, attend an event, volunteer, and contribute to the Drupal project. We don't actually expect that every single user will do all of these, uh, but as many users as we can get to convert on all of these uh, activities, the better. And th these are some of our kind of our key uh, measurements of engagement with users is that they're doing these types of activities. Um, I, I keep popping back up the user research, rem reminding people that the real focus of our efforts is that transition from learner to skilled, and that, that talks a little bit about you know getting people to build their proficiency. So, uh, getting them out of the I'm learning about Drupal to I'm actually doing things with Drupal, and ideally that they're they've moved into that area that they're making some part of their income um, in a Drupal related field. Uh, project deliverables for the content strategy project. We have quite a few deliverables in here. Uh, the vision brief, which has been shown to uh, the board, uh, kind of outlines those, those big ideas. There's also some key messages and the objectives that we started with are all included in that vision brief. Uh, we have a content audit template in place, and uh, we're going to be starting soon working on uh, what our content audit strategy is going to be to make sure that we know uh, what the majority of our, our content is. And we've already done one thing in this area that was really fascinating. We took and we looked at our books, and we were able to calculate that um, of all of the book pages created on Drupal.org, 35, I'm sorry, I, I just saw that sound drop. Can you guys hear me okay? Yes. Okay. Okay. Yep, we can. Sorry, Matthew, it was just you. <laughs> um, so a, one, of the, one of the stats that we, we found as we were really digging into the research is with Drupal 7 having been released in January of 2011, if we look at everything prior to 2011, it gives us a really good litmus test of content created before Drupal 7. Um, and book pages, 39% of our book pages were created prior to 2011. Of that 39%, 25% of all book pages from that time frame, or I'm sorry, of all time, have been updated. So basically, we have this uh, this kind of sweet spot of about 24% of our uh, our content. You're right, Tiffany. Those are different. I actually have a graphic up here that'll give me the correct number in just a second. But 25% of our content on book pages has not been updated since 2011, even though it was created prior to 2011. That's the stat I really want to get across. Um, yeah, you, have, you have three minutes left. That's good. I've got like two minutes of content. I can get through it. <laughs> uh, we're also working on a sitemap, uh, taking that high-level sitemap that we currently have, updating it into the new one. Uh, we're working on a governance and community management plan. Um, this is going to be a really important deliverable. Uh, it's going to take a lot of work with the working groups to make sure that we get something that we can share with the community that we think they're going to buy into. Uh, but the idea is if we're going to improve quality, we're going to have to implement some workflow and content lifecycle into the content that we have uh, to address those things like the 25% of content that hasn't been updated even though it was created, um, in this case, oh, almost five years ago. Um, ongoing staff work, we continue to map our message to our audience and our audience to our channels uh, so we have a full map of when we uh, communicate with different user types and with what messages we approach them. Uh, we're also doing some work to do some uh, rewriting of key content. Uh, we're working on a communications editorial calendar, and we're trying to define the role of, of community manager and what that looks like. Uh, we certainly have community managers in the community right now. A perfect example would be like Angie. That's, that's her title with Acquia. Um, but it, as it relates to Drupal.org content and onboarding new people as they're coming on board, we want to make this a little bit more formal, and we think that there's a, a need to, to staff up in that area as well. Uh, that's certainly one of the recommendations that's coming from Forum 1. And here's that stat I was talking about. 55% of Drupal.org book pages were created before Drupal 7. 32% have been updated since its launch, which gives us that 23% 20, 20, of all book content. See, I should have had that before I used that stat. Sorry. 23% of all book content is essentially out of date. 
and has not been touched uh, since Drupal 7 released. Um, rollout planning, we have a lot to do. I'm actually in the process of meeting with the documentation working group, uh, the content working group, uh, we have our all working groups meeting next week to kind of reiterate uh, much of the progress that we're making. Um, I will say that this, this presentation here is almost out of date already because we have a content model that we're going to be uh, putting in front of the working groups for feedback uh, starting this week. So um, there's some really exciting work in this and I, I think we're, we're kind of, we keep stumbling across new things that are, are just showing us just how vast our content library is from our, our uh, community generated content. Um, and we're coming up with some great ways to kind of restructure it and make it a, a lot better quality, which I think is gonna help Drupal in the long run. Joe, is there anything you had to? No, I think you covered it. Okay, cool. All right. Did I make it on time? Uh, you made it just on time, excellent. Um, I'm actually. I don't actually don't know if the the, um, the time includes time for Q and A. I actually also don't know if there are questions. I, I don't think I can see the chat. Um, the the ones that uh, popped up. Uh, Tiffany pointed out that the stats were different on uh, what I was quoting there. I should have had the the number in front of me before mentioning it. But the the 55 percent of all book content being created before Drupal 7 was the 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 real thing that we wanted to kind of throw out there is that we've got a lot of content that is years and years old. But that was the only question, Dries, so. All right, good. Yeah, I don't think, I think only the presenter can see the questions, maybe. Uh, yes, I will look, work on, um, next time I get the mouse back, I'll see if I can let you see the questions. All right, yeah, no worries, or it can help me yeah. uh, manage the questions. Uh, there's no question. Then, um, I think, uh, you know, Josh, I think is very helpful. Uh, and then the last part of the open session is the advertising, and we have uh, 20 minutes for that. So. All right, and that includes time for questions as well. So hopefully, I can. My primary focus is going to be on our advertising strategy for this year, but if time permits, I'm going to give a brief update on jobs and then open everything up for questions. Um, so just a quick update of our goals and year-to-date revenue so far. I just want to pause you and say, sure. welcome to Carrie Lucina. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think you guys have heard from before, but I want to make sure you know who's talking. This is Carrie. <laughs> welcome. Thank you. Another Hi. voice to memorize. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so our goals for Drupal.org web ads, or as we're now calling it internally, digital advertising, is $250,000 for the year. And as Megan mentioned, we're pretty strong there. Year to date, we're at 34% already. Um, so there's a lot of room for growth there, but we are making good progress so far. And then Drupal Jobs, the budget is 216000 It's a little bit soft right now. It's only at about 5%. We should be closer to 9 or 10. But I'll be talking about some new marketing initiatives that we're working on to try and remedy that. So since I started here in October, I've been doing a lot of research and trying to address some of the challenges um, regarding our new initiatives and our existing advertising opportunities. So I've been doing a lot of interviews with the Drupal Association and a lot of the board members, community members, and then various Drupal businesses, both large and small, just to get a good scope of what our marketers are looking for and what the community will support on Drupal.org. Um, one of the challenges that we need to address is that while there are banner ads on the site right now, there's a relatively low amount of page views on those pages. So one of our initiatives is to continue um, to grow that traffic and grow those opportunities directly on the site. Something that we need to be aware of is that um, as an industry standard, larger, more intrusive ads are becoming the norm. Um, so it's not necessarily the direction that we're going to go in, but it's just something to keep in mind as we're um, trying to compete with, I guess, other potential uh, publishers. Um, and on that same note, there are a lot of concerns over the user experience and the community impact of these new initiatives. And we're trying to be respectful towards the Drupal Association's engineering team. Um, they've got a really big roadmap this year, a ton to do. And while we're going to need their help, we're trying not to be completely disruptive. 
we're also working towards addressing the shift of programmatic advertising. Um, what that is, is data-driven, real-time, automated buying and selling of digital media. Um, so if you take a look at this chart over on the right, um, this shows total U.S. ad spend um, in the programmatic category. This year, 55% uh, of all digital advertising spend is expected to be programmatic, and that's going to jump to 63% in 2016. So in addition to ramping up our direct sales force, there's a really keen focus on some programmatic efforts as well. Um, one way to do that is to introduce ad networks and exchanges on your site, but that does pose some risk. Um, ad quality is really hard to monitor and maintain, um, as is the ad's relevance to the Drupal community. And there are relatively low um, prices just because of all the middlemen involved. It's definitely a volume game. So when you think of kind of the risk reward, it's not necessarily worth it at this stage in the game to introduce that risk to our site. And here's an example of what, oh, sorry. <laughs> what a typical publisher portfolio looks like in the advertising realm. Uh, many publishers are employing this barbell strategy, uh, where on one side of the spectrum there's a premium direct sold side, and on the other side there's this program pro programmatic automated side of things. Um, their inventory could include display advertising, which are basically banner ads on a desktop site or mobile or in a newsletter, email marketing, so for example, renting out a list for dedicated mailers, and the various custom programs, which is a basically a way to describe anything that's not a standard banner ad, so it's more out of the box or outside of the box. And then some sort of indirect or programmatic efforts, which could include <coughs> networks, open exchanges, and then um, private marketplaces. And just to help visualize and explain the difference between programmatic and manual and direct and indirect, um, this graph up here shows you on the manual side and the direct side, so the bottom right, um, that would include a direct sales team. So they're calling people and taking people out to lunch and sending, you know, in insertion orders and sending creative back and propping it. It's very manual. Um, a lot of the shift is trying to address some of that waste um, and making sure that things get a little bit easier um, with a more automatic process. And that's where we get to the programmatic side. Um, so on the indirect programmatic side is a real-time bidding platform. So that would be something like Google AdWords or Google Ad Exchange where there's People are bidding in real time on available inventory using data to inform their ad, ad decisions. And then programmatic direct. So that's a situation where you might create some sort of automated platform, um, but you there's a wall, so you would have to invite advertisers to participate in it, which is good for the publisher um, because it, it keeps a level of quality and control, um, and it does also require some direct um, Salesforce. So the biggest takeaways and guidelines from all of this research is that our new product should appeal, not only appeal to advertisers, but also support our users and or our mission. Um, when possible, we want to monetize users who are logged out and not contributing. Um, we're going to be handling that in a few different ways, but one way is to avoid the issue queue altogether. Um, but places like the home page is okay because it's not necessarily where people are coming to work. Um, we don't want to clutter the site and or interfere with navigation or disrupt visitors, especially contributors. Um, one of the biggest takeaways that I came across, especially when talking to Drupal businesses, is that these products need to be inclusive. Um, so we really need to focus on offering some low cost options so that smaller players can take part in them as well as the larger players. Create, we want to create more high impact opportunities for our partners and then address this large shift to programmatic advertising. Uh, so we got together as a team. Everybody came with a huge list of advertising product ideas and we ranked them against certain objectives like user experience and ROI scale and our ability to execute. And we came up with about six new products. Um, so this is just general category view of what our product portfolio is going to look like for 2015. Um, so we'll have on-site and newsletter display banners, a dedicated email program, 
um, a couple custom integrated programs, and then a programmatic marketplace. And I'll delve into each one of these individually. Um, On-site newsletter display banners are pretty straightforward. Um, I'm sure you've heard a lot about the content that we're curating, like Josh mentioned in his presentation, um, that uh, the marketing team has been working on these resource guides and content by industry and eventually blog posts that are not only really useful to our users and there's a big need for it, but it's also a good opportunity to increase our banner inventory on site um, and allow advertisers a really targeted advertising opportunity. Um, we're going to be rolling out an ISV marketplace program. So this is going to be very similar to what we're doing right now with the hosting listings in the marketplace where a supporting partner or a supporting technology partner can bid on a placement here. Um, it's uh, The ISVs are definitely a market that we're trying to go after more. Um, we're going to do this pricey model on more of a performance base, basis just so we can entice them to try advertising on Drupal.org and hopefully, hopefully expand those opportunities. We are creating an opt-in third-party dedicated mailer list. So when a user creates a new account on Drupal.org, they have the option to opt-in to special offers from our supporting partners. Um, this is going to take some time to implement. We, we started to work the opt-in placements um, on existing profiles. Um, but it'll take probably at least through Q2 and Q3 to build out this list in a meaningful way. So it's not available yet, but we hope to be able to start sending them in Q4. And these are, I anticipate, being really high in demand. Um, dedicated mailers usually work really, really well for the partner. It's, it's a win, especially if they can offer something special and unique to the users who sign up for it. Um, so again, it's something that's good for the advertiser, but also benefits the user who partakes in it. This Try Drupal program is one of the first um, kind of more custom integrations that we're doing. Um, this is a brainchild of Josh. Um, so we've been working on kind of the ins and outs and the details of it. Essentially, it's a lead generation program where a prospective user can try Drupal in a free dev environment. Um, we're going to be showcasing different hosting partners, but there are going to be certain tests in place just to make sure that it's a really positive experience for the user. So for example, you have to be able to set up a free account and create a site in under 20 minutes. So it's really consultative. We're going to be working really closely with these partners just to make sure while it is a revenue opportunity, it's also a really good, it fills the need of a feature that doesn't really exist on Drupal.org right now. And then the last product that I'm going to go into in more depth is um, what we're calling audience extension. It's similar to a private marketplace, except that it's all occurring off of the site. Um, it's a secure, anonymous, and non-interruptive way to advertise to Drupal.org visitors. And it's essentially allowing advertisers to programmatically reach visitors of Drupal.org while they're on other websites through ad networks and exchanges. Um, so anonymous visitors are, are tagged with a cookie, and then when they leave the site, um, the cookie follows them and then allows advertisers of our choosing to serve them ads across the web. There are a lot of questions that come up with this often just because it's really different and unique from anything that we've done uh, so far. So here's just kind of a list of some answers to our most frequently asked questions. Um, it is anonymous, no personally identifiable information is gathered, and no data is sold or exchanged. All this is doing is allowing, we're plugging into this larger platform and allowing advertisers of our choosing to bid on a potential ad impression. We're not actually giving anybody or exchanging data. Uh, the way we imp implemented this um, in a very careful way so that we're supporting do not track browser requests and we're just completely excluding logged in users and any traffic from the issue queue. It also does not conflict with EU privacy rulings. Um, the partner that we're working with to do this perfect audience um, does not allow you to bid on European traffic and that's how they kind of avoid that. Uh, my biggest, the reason I'm such a proponent of this particular product is that it's really inclusive. It's affordable for small businesses. It doesn't cost any money to join the program. It's a lot like Google AdWords. It's self-serving. You can sign up for free. 
Um, you don't have to have a, min a minimum spend. So if you wanted to test it out for a hundred bucks or less, you could do so. Um, and it's a huge plus that we can monetize the site without flooding it with ads and disrupting the user experience. <clears throat> Even though the ads will appear off of Drupal.org, we're still working with perfect audience to vet the, the potential advertise, advertisers and make sure that it's only high quality and relevant advertisers that are, that are able to participate. Um, so this program, it does have the potential to generate a significant amount of revenue as we um, continue to roll it out and invite more advertisers to come on board. And it requires very few resources from the association. The implementation was pretty quick on the engineering team. And instead of our sales force, we're working with the perfect audience sales force, which is much larger, it's about 15 people plus, um, and rely on them to kind of do the heavy lifting and the selling. This is a general picture of the timeline for when all of these products are going to be released. Um, it's a little bit hard to read, um, but basically the gist is we're trying to space it out a little bit so we're not completely taxing the engineering team. Um, but we're trying to front load it with some of the more, um, the higher revenue generating products just so we've got a nice little cushion that if some of the smaller products have to fall off the schedule, um, we're still really prepared revenue budget wise to do that. That's all I have for advertising. So I'm just going to do some quick jobs updates. And then if people have questions at the end, we can answer those. Um, you have about four minutes, by the way. Oh, okay. Or maybe a little bit more, five, five, five minutes. Five. Okay. Thank you. So we launched a homepage redesign. I think you, you're probably familiar with this already. We just cleaned it up a little bit created some new, more specific calls to action for an employer versus a job seeker. We added this featured company block up on the right side as an added benefit to anybody who purchases a Drupal job subscription. So not only would you get unlimited postings for a year, but you also get regular rotation in this really high profile placement. And starting yesterday, we actually just launched um, the ability for a job seeker to save a job search and then receive regular job notification email updates on it. So it's really good, good user experience. You know, somebody doesn't necessarily feel like they have to hit the site every day just to be abreast of new jobs. And it's good for new job postings because you know that relevant candidates are going to be aware of your posting as soon as it's up. We simplified the job store. We used to have five products. We narrowed it down to three. We've got a single job posting, a featured standalone job posting, and then the Drupal job subscription, which is still the same. It just now includes this added branding of the homepage promo, as well as exposure in, in those daily email notifications that just went out. Um, we were a little bit hesitant to flood the site with a lot of traffic before some of these changes went into place. Our customer <coughs> service ticket to purchase ratio was a little bit high in the beginning. Um, we just had a couple things that we needed to fine tune. Um, it was around 25%. Um, and now since these changes have been in place, it's dropped significantly, which is really good. Um, so we're down closer to the 10, 15% range. And that can always be improved upon, but now we can go ahead with some of these larger um, initiatives to drive lots of traffic and feel confident that we won't get flooded with customer service complaints. Um, so we're working on some integrated placements on Drupal.org, including um, a jobs link up in the top nav and then rolling out a more integrated block down in the bottom. And we, we're continuing to run banner ads across Drupal.org. Um, we're doing a lot more in terms of testing, trying to create campaigns that are catered towards job seekers versus employers, just so we can drill down um, and do better targeting on Drupal.org um, so we can make those a little bit more efficient. But we also realize that we need to reach beyond Drupal.org. We're working with EBQ, which is a marketing lead gen firm that we've been working on um, for some other initiatives. And we've recently tasked them to help us identify and reach out to some recruiters and end users and make sure that they're aware of Drupal jobs. Um, this month, we're going to be rolling out targeted email campaigns, both for existing customers who purchased and we want them to come back as well as leads who've come to the site and posted a job for free but haven't been converted to a purchaser. 
and then continuing our presence in the newsletter, the Drupal Association newsletter, and then dedicated mailers to accompany our banner ad campaigns to our Drupal business list. It might not happen anytime soon, but we are talking about developing an affiliate program for Drupal jobs. So partner sites or newsletters can promote Drupal jobs and then we can give them a rev share and any sales that come of it, which is just a really good way to expand our reach without necessarily having to invest in an ad budget. And then continuing to have some kind of presence at upcoming Drupal cons. All right. Awesome. Thank you. Um, we have uh, one or two minutes for questions. If there is any. Uh, Karen had some questions. Uh, and it is, oh, Karen wants to know, on the ad revenue, is it 33% or 33% of bookings or 33% of earned revenue at this point? Bookings. Yeah. And let's see, will we invite only new accounts to opt in? And I assume, Karen, um, that you here are referring, oops, I assume, Karen, that you are referring here to um, the the list, the email list. Yeah, I'm guessing. Um, right now, the only opt-in is actually has been added to existing accounts, um, so you can actually go into your account and then opt-in, and then we will we will shortly be rolling out the feature for new members. Um, but obviously, we want to roll this out to as many existing members that we have. So. Well, the 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 field is added to a new account. Oh, it is. Okay, yeah. So on both fronts, um, the opt-in is available, and uh, we'll probably, you know, work with the marketing team to try and make sure that there's some more awareness around that. Yeah. And then Matthew wants to know what we're using for the email newsletter. Uh, we are, uh, as of this week, actually, uh, Friday, I think it was, mm -hmm. we made the last push to move our newsletters over onto Mailchimp. Um, they're one of our uh, premium technology supporters, and they're actually um, doing a very generous donation to uh, to get us kind of off the ground, being able to move our entire list over to that. So, um, Drupal Association newsletter was already there, but uh, this is going to move uh, maintainer news, uh, the Drupal newsletter. Eventually, we, we haven't moved security or um, we haven't we haven't moved security or maintainer yet. But we've moved uh, all the other newsletters over to Mailchimp. So mm -hmm. now is it? Okay. Awesome. Alrighty. Um, I think that concludes the um, public part of the board meeting. Yeah. Uh, thanks everybody. And then we are uh, the board members and um, and Holly and and Megan, I believe, are going to regroup um, for the executive session. We'll see you over there. All right. Thank you.